Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones, and I'm very happy to bring you this study. And, and this study is entitled, okay, Greek and its fruits. Greek and its fruits. Now, whatever translation you may have, I don't care if it's in a German language, Russian, Spanish, English, Italian, French, whatever it is, if it's not the biblical languages, okay, meaning Greek and Hebrew, all right, it is not the standard. The standards are the original autographs written up, you know, written up by uh, Matthion, Markon, Lucan, Yanin, and so on, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And those are the standards. Since we don't have the original autographs anymore, the standards became the copies of manuscripts that we have of the Hebrew and the Greek, okay? So, with that in mind, it's very important to know the Greek language. Now, I'm doing a set of series, okay, uh, going up against the Watchtower Society's doctrine, you know, Kingdom Hall. And I just want to tell you that it's very important to know the Greek language because if you know the Greek, first of all, you're not going to be easily fooled or tricked or deceived, okay? And number two, it is just, it's, it's just going to be good for your edification and your self-edification and your witnessing skills would improve in the spirit much more. Anyway, we can't talk a lot, so let's get to it. Now, I'm going to use as a textbook Julius R. Mantis, professor, by the way, okay, Professor Julius R. Mantis' book, and uh, he wrote it with uh, Professor Dana, okay? Now, uh, this is a 1955 uh, uh, book entitled, quote, A Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament. Now, now, amazingly enough, you can still get this on Amazon.com, okay? I, I really exhort you to get a copy of it, and, and here we go. Now, I'm going to skip the introductions. The introductions are amazingly enough, okay? For about 20 pages, they go on uh, really honoring the people that made manual Greek grammars before them, okay? So that's a wonderful thing just to behold, you know, just to read. Now, we go to page 20, and I'm going to give you... Now, I, I went through the trouble, okay? To write the, 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 you know, to make a copy, okay, in my Corel Video Studio, right? Uh, I, I made a copy of this page. Now, this is, this is the Greek alphabet. Now, the Greek alphabet has 24 Greek letters, okay? Now, let me give them to you, okay? Now, what you see here is the first column are the names of the letters. The names of the letters, okay? Now, um, the second column are the capitals, okay? And uh, the third column are uh, small letters. And then uh, the, I don't know if I wrote the fourth one, though, because I'm doing the digital recording audio, you know, uh, before doing anything visual. So I, I, I didn't see the sheet for a while. So I don't know if I have the unctuals up there, but that's the fourth column. So let's read the alphabet, okay? Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta. Eta, Veta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Kasi, Omicron, P, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Ki, C, Omega. Okay, now, by the way, this was uh, section 23 in the book. Okay, page uh, 20 again. Now, let's go through these letters again. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Veta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu. Nu, Kasi, Omicron, P, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Ki, C, Omega. Now, I pronounced the, uh, the Omicron, Omicron. You can pronounce it Omicron as well, okay? Now, let's check out some of these letters, okay? All of these letters. Now, the alpha, of course, is the first letter in the Greek alphabet. That's, that's obvious, okay? And it's spelled out A-L-P-H-A. 
that does appear spelled out, okay, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, okay? So when it says the Alpha and Omega, it has the Alpha spelled out, and at least in uh, Alfred uh, Marshall Greek interlinear, the Omega is not spelled out. It just has the Omega, which looks like a W when it's not capitalized, okay? Now, let's check uh, these things out. Now, the Alpha, okay, the Alpha... Of course, it's the first letter in the Greek alphabet. It's very important, okay, to, to know that. I mean, you, you have a lot of words that, that appear in, in, the, in the New Testament that have that, that Greek letter, uh, alpha, you know, like RK, okay? We're going to go into rough breathing and soft breathing uh, later on, maybe in another uh, a study. It's very important how to sound off these, these uh, uh, you know, these words and letters and names and, and stuff like that, you know, when you're looking at a manual. So... I mean, we're going to go into um, diphthongs, and we're going to go into uh, rough breathing and soft breathing, and we're going to go into crassus. Let me get into um, section 24 and read a little bit of this section because it's very important. Quote, languages was originally spoken so that letters are but arbitrary symbols, okay? Arbitrary symbols invented to represent sounds. Vocal cards or vocal sounds, I should say, are made by contracting the vocal cords so that they vibrate as the breath passes through. Okay, so what he's saying is that, you know, these are arbitrary symbols, all these letters, okay? And, um, you know, that the breath passes through the vocal cords and sounds are made. Returning to text. The... Uh, Varieties, it says over here, the varieties, enunciation, are uh, secured by varying the positions of the organs of the mouth, okay? Now, we're going to be looking at some of these organs, okay, like dentals and labials and things like that. So, you know, that's what he's going to be talking about. Now, this is over here, returning, on, uh, uh, returning to text on page 21 now, it says, These variations may be separated, okay, into two uh, principal classes. Those made by, now check this out, girls and boys, those made by obstructed breath, okay, and those made by unobstructed breath. Okay, so he's going to give you letters to give you an indication uh, of, you know, what are these uh, two classes, okay? Returning to text. It says over here, consequently, okay, there are in the nature of the case only two classes of letters. The consonant, and he's going to give us 17 consonants, okay? Uh, you, you, you're going you're to have seven vowels and 17 consonants, okay? The consonants are those made by obstructed breath okay obstructed breath now the vowels which are seven vowels in the greek uh, uh language the vowels are those made by unobstructed breath and he's going to give you examples of those now i made th i went to the trouble to write all of this stuff right that, that's going to follow now we have in parentheses number one the consonants may be classif uh, classified as follows. Now, he's going to give you the 17 letters and the classifications, okay? Now, under A, we have liquids. Under B, we have mutes, and we have three uh, subclassifications with that. And then we have C, which are sibilants, okay? So we got, I know these are kind of strange words and stuff like that, but we're going to get through them, hopefully, anyway. Uh, so that way we can, uh, you know, witness to the witnesses, okay? That's the deal. So the deal is, under number one, it says over here again, the consonants may be classified as follows. Now, he's going to give you a classification. Let's look at letter A first, okay? Now, le under letter A, we have liquids. Now, what are liquids? Well, these there are four letters that you see are uh, right beside liquids. Okay, these are consonants, and they are as follows. Lambda. Mu. Now, when I say mu, that's like in Mary. Okay, like in mu. You know, you ever milked a cow upstate? Well, there you go. All right. So we have lambda, mu, and then nu, like in Nancy. Okay. And then we have 
uh, that looks like a letter P, but it's not. It's a row. It's equal to our R, okay? So those are liquids, okay? We'll discuss those later. So I'm just going to get through uh, a letter B and then go back to the alphabet, hopefully, anyway. Now, on the mutes, okay, we have three distinctions. I'll call them distinctions for now. We have three distinctions, okay? We have gutturals, labials, and dentals. These are the organs of the mouth, okay? That's what they are, all right? Now, he even said it on page 20. Let me see if I can find a place. It says, um, okay, it says, the varieties, okay, of enunciation are secured by varying the positions of the organs of the mouth, end quote, okay? So these are organs of the mouth, you know, labials and, and dentals and all that stuff, okay? So under mutes, we have these, uh, these sub-distinctions. Uh, uh, we have oh, yeah, gutturals, okay, and besides gutturals are the letters kappa, gamma, key. Those are gutturals. Now, we have um, columns over here, okay, so we have kappa being smooth, gamma being middle, and we have key being uh, rough, okay? Now, we have labials. What are labials? These are all consonants, okay? These are not vowels. Now, under labials, we have P, the letter P. looks like a little stool over there, okay? And um, that's under smooth. And then beta is under middle, and then phi is under rough. It's classified as such. Now, we go to dentals, okay? If you ever went to the dentist, there you go, okay? You already know Greek. All right, so the dentals are as follows. You got tau, delta, Theta, okay, those are dentals, okay, and the uh, let me see over here the tau is smooth, the delta is middle, and theta is rough, okay. Now, under C, we have sibilants, okay, sibilants. Now, these letters are consonants and these are sibilants, okay. Now, we have zeta, like in zoo, you know what I mean? So, you got zeta, then we have kasi. Okay, really say C like that, you know, but we have to see. It looks like they, the both of them look like snakes over there. I don't know. And so anyway, the sigma is the, uh, is the third sibilant uh, over here. And then that letter that looks like an anchor, that, that's a C. Okay, that's the second to last letter in the Greek alphabet, all right? Now, let's go back to the letters because I don't think I'm going to have time, okay, as I look at my clock over here. It's not that I want to go. It's just that I might not have a lot of time. I only have one minute left, okay? I'm down to one minute. So anyway, let's look at some of these letters again, okay? Now, um, a lot of these letters are equal to our English letters, okay? We have alpha, when it's capitalized, it looks like a capital A. Beta, when it's capitalized, looks like a capital B, okay? Um, epsilon, when it's capitalized, looks like a capital E. Zeta, when it is capitalized, looks like a capital Z, okay? And um, over here, we have Iota, which is very important because the first letter in, in Jesus' name, Jesus, that looks like a capital I. Kappa looks like a capital K when it is capitalized. Uh, mu and Nu looks like a capital M and N, okay? Omicron looks like a capital O when it is capitalized, all right? Now, be careful with the row. That's equal to our R, and it looks like a P. That is not, this is, doesn't function like a P. So if you're going to try to find a letter to the Romans, you're going to see that letter, okay? And the book of Ruth in, in the Old Testament in the Greek Septuagint. The tau is also, uh, it also looks like a, our English equivalent, and, and that's equal to the T, okay? So you have some of those things over there. Um, there are, are, you know, it's easy to read Greek because uh, we already know some of these letters anyway. You know, you know what I mean? They're, they're the counterparts to the English. So... Like the Alpha, you're going to see um, in Abraham's name in uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. And also, um, you're going to see, you're going to see uh, Beta in uh, Matthew 1, 1, okay? Um, that's going to, you're going to see the Greek word Biblos, uh, uh, Beta, Iota, Beta, Lambda, Omicron, Sigma. In English, it'll be uh, B-I-B-L-O-S. It means book, Okay. And you're going to see a version of that also in um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. So, anyway, I have to go, guys. So, I'm going to give you the, the next Greek lesson. 
on the New Testament, and I hope you enjoyed the study, okay? And so hopefully you could get to read a Greek New Testament and actually really confront the witnesses with the Greek New Testament, the deity of Christ, the Trinity, the Incarnation, and stuff like that. Hey, guys, take care. Bye-bye. And I just want to tell you that it's very important to know the Greek language because if you know the Greek, first of all, you're not going to be easily fooled or tricked or deceived, okay? And number two, it is just, it's, it's just going to be good for your edification and your self-edification and your witnessing skills would improve in the spirit much more. Anyway, we can't talk a lot, so let's get to it. Now, I'm going to use as a textbook Julius R. Mantis, professor, by the way. You know, autographs written up, you know, written up by uh, Matthion, Markon, Lucan, Ianning, and so on. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And those are the standards. Since we don't have the original autographs anymore, the standards became the copies of manuscripts that we have of the Hebrew and the Greek. Okay? So, with that in mind, it's very important to know the Greek language. Now, I'm doing a set of series, okay? Uh, going up against the Watchtower Society's doctrine, you know, Kingdom Hallway. Okay, Professor Julius R. Manti's book, and uh, he wrote it with uh, Professor Dana. Okay, now uh, this is a 1955 uh, uh, book entitled, quote, A Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament. Now, now amazingly enough, you can still get this on Amazon.com, okay? I, I really exhort you to get a copy of it, and, and here we go. Now, I'm going to skip the introductions. The introductions are amazingly enough, okay? For about 20 pages, they go on uh, really honoring the people that made manual Greek grammars before them. Okay, so that's a wonderful thing just to behold, you know, just to read. Now, we go to page 20, and I'm going to give you... Now, I, I went through the trouble, okay, to write the, the, the... You know, to make a copy, okay, in my Corel Video Studio, right? Uh, I, I made a copy of this page, now, this is, this is the Greek alphabet. Now, the Greek alphabet has 24 Greek letters, okay? Now, hi, everybody. This is Angelo Quinones, and I'm very happy to bring you this study. And, and this study is entitled, okay, Greek and its fruits. Greek and its fruits. Now, whatever translation you may have, I don't care if it's in a German language, Russian, Spanish, English, Italian, French, whatever it is, if it's not the biblical languages, okay, meaning Greek and Hebrew, all right, it is not the standard. The standards are the original.